Dr. Tlamini, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we go into leadership, can you please tell us a little bit more about your own background? Um, I was born in Westville, uh, in Durban, uh, during the advent uh, of Group Areas Act. So when I was born already, uh, there was a proclamation that uh, Westville is going to be a white area. But uh, I actually, we lived there till I was uh, about seven, actually no, uh, till I was uh, 15 uh, when we moved to Claremont. My dad bought a property in Claremont. Right. Uh, that was one of the few areas where blacks were allowed to buy property. He was quite uh, uh, sticky about having a freehold uh, property. Yeah, so that's, uh, I'm a Devon girl. And Born can you Devon. tell us, as you grew up, what was your dream career? From the age of four, I wanted to be a medical doctor. Okay. Mm. And you started your career as a medical doctor, is that correct? I started correct? my career as a medical doctor, so my dream came true. And yeah. then from uh, the medical field, you went into business. Uh, yes, from the medical field, I actually specialized in occupational health, uh, consulted uh, in business uh, in occupational health, but then uh, changed. I went to business school to leave the profession. I just needed mm. the skills, which I didn't have, though I had actually started venturing into business. Uh, mm. That exposed uh, quite a few gaps in my knowledge, and uh, I thought, okay, I can go and study, which I did. And uh, then I went into investment banking mm -hmm. and uh, I was there for only two years. And then I came out and became uh, my own boss like I've been for the past uh, couple of decades now. And can you tell us who inspired you throughout your career? You know, I always say my parents inspired me. Um, their value system, their ethic, work ethic. And uh, just believing that power was, was it was within their hands, in spite of the dark days of apartheid, they never had a victim mentality. They always had the can-do uh, mentality. And uh, I took that from them. And uh, no one actually has inspired me more than my parents. And looking back over your career, what would you say was the turning point, or maybe the turning points? Sure, there have been quite a few. Mm. Um, leaving, um, starting with leaving my practice in, in the township, yeah. uh, because I was in the township as a GP for 13 years mm -hmm. and I loved it. And, uh, but uh, I was affected by crime. So I had to move my practice to sell my practice and then start a, a new one in Durban uh, at the C in the CBD, yeah. which was actually quite different. It wasn't as fulfilling as mm -hmm. being in the township, that's when I lost the passion and uh, I had to do something else and uh, I had already started in business uh, but as a sideline. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I'll just go and do it full time. And uh, so selling my practice, going and studying full time at Wits Business School, that was a change. And going to work for someone for the first mm -hmm. time in my life in the investment bank, that was a change. Uh, working with numbers, working at an investment bank as opposed to working with people that you can touch, that have a soul, was quite a change. And uh, coming out uh, on my own and uh, starting to employ quite a few people, uh, that was a change. So there have been quite a few changes. And uh, starting now to join boards, uh, being a chairman of a board of a listed company, I've had quite a few changes. Mm -hmm. And then deciding to do a doctorate in business leadership and uh, then deciding to write a book, becoming an author, that was a change. So I've really had a lot of changes, but I thrive from change mm. because I've realized that it's not just about losing passion, it's getting bored. Mm. After 10 years, you just feel like, mm, there must be more to life than this. Mm. I've done this, I get it. What else is there to understand? Mm. You know, so yeah, it's been fun. And can you tell us what is driving you today? You know, living my purpose. I truly mm. believe I'm living my purpose. And I feel that when I go and talk, like yesterday I spoke to great tens at St. Stephen's, mm. and 
there is just this energy that is actually shared when you talk to young people, talk about the successes of different people, especially people that they read about mm. and understanding their stories that they also didn't just become successful. They started from nothing and built their careers and built their lives. I truly believe that as a country, as a continent, mm. we need to hear more stories of people that come from this continent because there are quite mm. a lot of them and inspire uh, the youth mm. because one of the things that drive me is just having some small input in closing the inequality gap, mm. you know. And uh, it is my, really, my dream that uh, the continent becomes one of the best mm. uh, in the next couple of decades and uh, it will take each one of us who has access to information, mm. who has access to money, who has access to anything to make that change and change things around. Now, Dr. Tlamini, talking about leadership, what does the future of leadership mean to you? You know, I believe that there are certain things that if we got right would actually make the future bright because mm. The future of leadership is really about doing the best with what you have, which is mm. the people. Uh, so it starts with an inclusive culture. I find that as a leader, if you have 10 people around the room, but you actually don't allow each one of them to be the best they can and just be themselves, you actually lose out. Mm. Because if the culture is actually only receptive to a boys club to pick mm. one and you have three women out of the ten you've lost those women mm. because if the culture of organizations is only based on the dominant a uh, mm. group the dominant culture what happens is that everybody else assimilates mm. and once people assimilate you've lost them mm. because if i walk in here being myself and happy in my own skin mm. i can be innovative I can come up with ideas without fear that I'll actually my ideas won't be recognized. I don't need to wear a coat that assimilates to, to the majority culture. Mm. So as leaders, you need to have an inclusive culture and mm. allow people to be. That's one. You actually need ethical leadership. Mm. Ethical leadership is about serving people. Mm. It's not about you being served. The people that you lead, you need to serve them because serve and guide them because that's what you're there for. Identify the best in each one and work with what they have. And what have you learned from your own journey that you consider most important for building future leaders? You know, what I've learned is that being authentic and consistent mm. is very important because then people know what you expect. Secondly, you have to empower your people. Give them guidance and allow them to run with it. Because mm. when people feel empowered, they come up with innovative ideas, you know. And one of the things that I've loved ever since I came full on uh, in business is identifying someone who is a cleaner in mm. the organization. Identify something about that person and then pay for them to go to school. Mm. Give them a different position and just watch how they thrive. Mm. That's loyalty built and that's a talent that's identified. Mm. So as leaders, we need to identify talent within the organization. So just because someone came in as a shop floor assistant doesn't define his destiny or her mm. destiny. Identify what it is that they are good at work with it and make a change, help mm. them to make a change with their life. I love that. Now, Dr. Tlamini, when you speak to aspiring leaders, what do you tell them they should focus on for future-proofing their career? You know, investing in yourself is one of the best things mm. you can do. Whether it's education, whether it's actually building relationships around you, Because it doesn't matter how, te how much technology takes uh, over, mm. you still need people. You still need relationships. So investing in relationships 
and investing in yourself empowering yourself with knowledge with education i, I found that to be mm. a very good uh, investment and talking about technology what are the key technologies that you envisage will drive the leadership of the future you know it's it's quite interesting because rather than focusing on the technology the focus is what are we trying to achieve mm. we're trying to be cost effective we're trying to be a uh, user friendly to actually bring in as many people as possible lower the cost of things a uh, change just to give an example in 1907 the average life expectancy was 45 mm. in 2007 average life expectancy 75 mm. uh, in 2107 who mm. knows but what's driving that just take one thing 3d printing right mm. you now have organs a uh, you know and mm. prosthesis uh, being um, developed you now have uh, if you just take laparoscopic mm. uh, surgery mm. I'm, i'm talking on the health side how it change the side effects because the downtime is lower uh, the, side, uh, the 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 complications are lower if you do mm. laparoscopic instead of a full open surgery mm. uh, but not only that the stem cell uh, uh, medical side of things mm. and you look at going back again to 3d uh, printing in the pharmaceutical sector you find that someone has multiple chronic illnesses and with just one drug there is actually specificity and accuracy of delivery mm. of a drug at a specific time so instead of taking these 10 pills you're taking one so mm. so much is happening so much has happened uh, driverless uh, mm. cars mm. Uh, who knew that we would have that mm. and uh, i don't know when we'll actually mm. have that as a, a common mode of transport uh, we are told it will be safer mm. and uh, if you look at our country i think uh, the highest uh, rate of death is because mm. of accidents so there are just so many things that are happening look at the drone uh, uh, system where you have a mine where human beings can't access mm. and then you use the drone to access mm. and uh, yeah robotics Uh, in medicine where uh, the hand of a surgeon cannot reach use robotics so it's quite a variety of technology that exists today that then gets used by different sectors mm. uh, of society to make a difference and dr tamini when you speak to future leaders what do you tell them about social media how they should go about using social media for building their own personal brand Uh, it's quite interesting because the way i see it is that it depends on what who are you targeting mm. when you use social media who actually is the target market when you use instagram who are you mm. going to reach when you use twitter who are you going to reach mm. so in my view it's specific to mm. the target market for you and the message that you want to send mm. so based on that you might actually based on the type of uh, business you in you might actually say i'll use twitter i'll use facebook i'll use instagram mm. and the reasons are because that's the market mm. uh, that i want to target which happens to use that particular type of social media now dr lamini throughout your career you have mentored many future leaders can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored somebody and that person took your advice to heart Sure, there are quite a few, uh, but without mentioning names. For instance, I now have a guy who's a facilities manager. Mm. When I met him six years ago, he actually used to make coffee. Mm. But I saw the leadership in him. I have so many other examples where you see leadership in a person, and I like the ones that I have direct influence. Uh, with because I work with them of course there are other mentees uh, that uh, are outside my exact sphere of influence uh, that have mentored one of them is now a CEO mm. uh, uh, of a company uh, when I met her she was uh, doing her auditing uh, mm. uh, work uh, but you can't then claim that because there are so many other influences that each mm. person has 
Whereas when it's directly uh, with your employees, mm -hmm. you, you know you've had a lion's share mm -hmm. in terms of making that person believe in himself or herself mm -hmm. and help them uh, to build their career. And can you tell us who are the role models of leadership that you feel future leaders should study and maybe learn from? You know, it's interesting. For me, it's my parents. But I just feel that the stories of good African leaders mm -hmm. have not been told yet mm -hmm. because people look at people from the West because that's what we have access to. That's what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. That's what you read. So the onus is on leaders mm -hmm. who know about these uh, African leaders, the Thomas mm -hmm. Sankara, uh, the Mumumba, Patrice uh, Lumumba, mm -hmm. so many that we don't know much about. If you go to the schools, we don't teach the history mm. uh, to the African child because I find that when someone who has done great things mm. is accessible to you because they look like you and talk like you, that mm. inspires you more than mm. someone from a different continent mm. that you can't relate to. You think it's inaccessible. So I, I, I truly believe that we have a lot of work to do to address that. Now, Dr. Tlamini, um, how can our listeners get hold of you? Where can they follow you and how, how can they connect with you? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn and uh, I actually get a lot of people, I connect with a lot of people through LinkedIn. So I think that's the, the safest way. And last but not least, is there one piece of advice that you would really like to convey to future leaders that they should implement in their own leadership? You know, be true to yourself. Respect people and yourself mm. and uh, allow them to be. Mm. Allow them to be. Don't try to assimilate them to a culture that's foreign to them. Mm. Just allow them to be. Then you'll get the best out of them. Well, Dr. Dlamini, thank you so much for you. sharing your insights and your wisdom and for helping us to build a better world. Thank you. Thanks very much for making the time.